All right, we'll get started with tonight's availability with Coach Wells. We'll jump straight into questions and we'll start with Sean Dillon. Coach, after looking at the tape, what are you, what did you see in the second half that showed you some places to improve this week as you uh, head toward Oklahoma? I think the first thing uh, just this week, Sean, would be just sustaining things on offense. That's that's what the kind of the, the story of the, the second half became. First of all, not very many possessions. Um, I think we had 10 on offense and, and we defended nine. So when you don't have very many possessions, everything's magnified. You know, um, so just sustainability on offense, continuing to, to find ways to run the ball and, and move the ball like that. And we've got to get it in the hands of, of Kalen and um, Eric a lot more, but just sustaining drives. And how did your has your philosophy changed on bringing Donovan Smith into more non non just running uh, pack packages, or or is there in a a period of time where you might think of expanding his package where he's not uh, just to come in to uh, run an option? Yeah, and I think we've done that. I, so I think you've seen that the last couple of weeks that he doesn't just come in to run the option. Um, you certainly don't want to be, um, uh, you know, from a schematic standpoint, just pigeonholing yourself into to one or two things. And so I think that's why we've expanded his, his package and you've seen him throw the ball. You've seen him um, throw a quick game. You've seen him throw a shot. You've seen him throw some play action. Um, you've seen it um, not only run the option, but hand the ball off and do some different things. So we got to continue to do that as long as you're planning because he gives you an advantage of, of some of the things that he can do, you do need to expand it just so you're not, um, you're not predictable. We'll go to Randy Rosetta. Hey, Matt. Yes, sir. Why do you think this team has struggled to be consistent from one week to the next? Oh, I, you know, it, three, uh, you know, I, that's a good question. I, I don't know, Randy, um, exactly, because I don't think it's been bad inconsistencies. Um, you, you look at coming from Kansas to Kansas State, just let's go the most recent. Um, you know, yesterday's game comes down to a handful of plays. We didn't make them. Um, whether we didn't execute right or mistakes were made, we certainly didn't lose yesterday because of heart or effort or anything like that, um, which I don't think we've lost this year on that. But, um, you know, we've had two letdowns at, at Texas and at TCU. Yesterday was not a letdown. Yesterday, we, we didn't win a close game. We didn't make the plays down the stretch that you needed to make like we did against West Virginia. We made those plays at West Virginia. We got a first down by a couple of inches right in the end of the second quarter to go down and kick a field goal right before half. And you know, we got a big third and four completion against press man coverage to Lowick. Um, and we popped a couple runs at the very end to kick a game winning field goal. You know, we did not pop the two runs at the very end um, yesterday to kick a game winning field goal or at least a, a go ahead field goal. So, you know, I think when you look at those two couple things, it, it just comes down to a couple plays. We didn't make them yesterday and it hurts. Uh, and it's, uh, it's unfortunate. And, you know, it's uh, that, that makes it a tough loss. So when you get together with your coaches on a day like today, how do you kind of assess how you guys can help players get through, make plays like that, get through in those situations? Yeah, we do it every we do it every Sunday, win or lose. Uh, we get together and you um, you talk about things that you did well that you got to keep doing things you did not do well and you need to move on from um, either schemes or personnel or things that you got to improve on. We do it every Sunday. Um, and that's, that's our job to try to get individual players to play better. And, um, you know, so that's, that's a challenge each and every week with every kid we got in the program and even the guys that are playing well, how do you continue to give them things for them to take their game to another level? The guys that are playing very well right now, like the schoolers and the Ricos um, and those guys, um, but then guys that maybe didn't play as well. That's, that's our job, whether it's inspiration or it's, uh, schematics or, or what have you. Uh, I think it's different uh, a little bit every week. Last one for me, I think it was Belichick that famously said, ignore the noise. 
how much do you have to get your guys to ignore all the noise that's bubbling to the surface right now? Oh, there's there's noise around every program that's that that faces a loss, that has a loss. You know, we're five and three right now. We're doing some things that are really really good, um, and so you know, I choose to uh, to lean on that, um, give these guys confidence. You know, right now we're I think we're first in the country. One of our coaches told me um, with plays over 40 yards or more, we're second in over 50 yards or more and and from an explosive standpoint we're doing some good stuff didn't do as much didn't do it didn't do enough yesterday I'm the first to admit it you know defensively I think to six out of the eight games we've held teams to under 100 yards rushing I don't know if anybody knows that counting the Kansas game where we pulled the starters we were had held them to 80 yards rushing and pulled our starters midway through the fourth quarter um, that's something that's that's pretty good you know, and so a handful of plays yesterday we, we got beat by. Um, but going back and, and kind of wrapping this question up, the noise is there um, from the very first time you lose. And um, that's, that's the business we're in. And that's, the, um, that's college football. We certainly understand that. And, um, but we know, well, I know this, the players continue to believe and they continue to fight. Um, we stick together, uh, coaches and players. and. Um, We'll continue to control our own destiny in terms of how this season ends out, okay, by the choices that we make every week and every day to continue to invest in this program. And so um, we'll continue to do that. Go to Chuck Hines. Hi, Coach. Sorry. Hi, Coach. I, if, you, if this question has been asked, I apologize. I had a little technical issue. It was on my end. It's my fault. Um, I'm curious with Donovan's play, um, especially in the second half, if, if using him as much as you have, if, if that has maybe disrupted the flow of your offense, or if you if it's slowed you down a little bit, or if you've if you've noticed anything along those lines. I don't believe it has. And um, did you have a chance to look at the um, the punt return where it was, uh, you know, down at the four? Was was he up a little bit further than than you wanted him to be? No, he was right where we wanted to be. Just think we misjudged it a little bit, Chuck, in the wind. Um, certainly would have liked to catch it. He would have liked to catch it. and um, Unfortunately, that hurt us with the field position. We lost 20-something yards right there in field position right there. Um, so, yeah, need to, need to get that fielded. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll move to Don Williams. Hey Matt, when uh, when Tyler Chuck got hurt at Texas, you said it would be he would be out at least six weeks uh, after the open date. When you play Iowa State, uh, that will that that will be seven weeks from when he got hurt. How close is he to uh, being cleared to return? Um, and is he uh, uh, how likely is he to play after that open date? I won't speculate on the second part of the question, Don. That's not fair to Tyler, I don't think, coming back from an injury. But we're certainly getting to that point where it is five or six weeks in the next couple of weeks. Um, he's working his tail off in the training room. Um, he's in every quarterback meeting. You know, he's doing things with Drew and Dave, uh, with our training staff um, every day. He's in the building every day and, and certainly um, – my guess is that at some point our 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 doctors will re X-ray him or MRI him, and uh, and see where that is because that's that's about the timeline. You're right on the timeline, but anything past that, I won't speculate. That's not fair to Tyler. Well, I was going to ask you when he is healthy. What do you see your quarterback situation have since you've Again, played? I won't yeah, again, three Don, guys I can't have speculate on that. Significant play time. You're asking me about three weeks okay. from now. Okay. Uh, Tyree Wilson, you know, made a couple sacks there on that uh, 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 Kansas State's game winning drive. And he's kind of flashed at times. He flashed at West Virginia with a guy that size and perceived ability level. How do you turn him into? Uh, a more dominant player. I think I think Tyrese played 
his best football as a Red Raider in the last three, four weeks. Just like you mentioned, he flashes. Um, he's straining. He's um, he's playing better than he's ever played. Um, and so I think hopefully Tyree's better ball is still ahead of him. He continues to, uh, to keep practicing well and staying healthy is the key for him. And, um, and playing good ball, I think he'll continue to play good. We need him to. He's done a really nice job. I've been proud of him. Go to Joe Yeager. Uh, actually, Don just, just asked my question, so I don't have anything. <laughs> Don beat me to the punch. All right, do we have any other questions for Coach tonight? All right, we'll go back to Don to finish. Don did the manual hand. <laughs> I was afraid Daddy was going to shut it off real quick. Um, Sean Merriweather, coming out of the Texas game, Keith talked about how he, some of his linebackers, he, he felt he was playing too many players, and some of the linebackers then disappeared for a week or two. Krishan played a lot yesterday. What did he do to – was that more of a game plan thing versus what Kansas State did, or what did he kind of do to get himself back into the – rotation yeah I think he's practicing better and and he certainly played well Don um, you know we did not have Jacob Morgenstern who was out um, with an injury and so he he needed to play he played well Schooler played on the outside Rico played on the outside um, uh, Randall played a little bit Krishan stayed inside at Mike this week and so it was a little bit of the mix of who was healthy uh, Krishan's playing well, certainly proud of him yesterday and um, and a little bit of Kansas State scheme and personnel that they were playing with, with multiple tight ends and, and at times a fullback. Can you give us any update on Reggie Pearson's status? I, I don't have one for you tonight, day to day. Have you had a season where you have had more guys go down through via friendly fire because by my count he's the guy that uh third th your, your third player at least your third player this season that's maybe four come out of a game because of being hit by four maybe field, field. fields guys gonna say, uh, yeah just, yeah yeah three or four don um you know, we've had a flurry. Um, uh, we've had a few recent concussions, like you're mentioning, a flurry of them here lately. And I actually just talked to our training staff. Um, you know, we had twice as many two years ago, and we had more last year. We've just had our flurries come the last four weeks. Unfortunately for us, it hasn't really been spaced out. So... Well, when you said four, I remember uh, Fields, uh, Reggie yesterday, Kosai Eldridge at West Virginia. Who else? In uh, that? Well, there's three. That's why I said three or, or four. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, you know, okay. I don't, I don't have an explanation for you there. So a couple of those were keep your eyes up and see what you're hitting in terms of a target. What I'm just, I mean, these, these collisions right now are, I mean, they're, they're so fast. They're bang, bang. Sometimes it's hard to know right where the helmet is. I mean, they're not, I don't think there's any intentional, obviously. Yeah. How close uh, is Kosa uh, close at all to being back? We'll see. Yeah, I think so. I think he's got a chance this week. We'll see. Again, the next few days will tell. All right, do we have any last minute questions? All right, if not, we will um, talk to you Tuesday at Tuesday's press conference. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.